Hey everybody, it's Chase with AV Pop Culture again, and today we are continuing our spooky season content with one of the biggest videos I've ever done. This is the top 25 best horror kills of all time. So pop that tape in, I got you. Let's go do this. All right, so top 25 best horror kills, horror death scenes of all time. This one's going to be controversial, I am sure, because there is it is very difficult to narrow it down to 25, but I have done my best here. These are what I consider the 25 best. There's a couple that probably could have made my list. I could have interchanged with some of these, and there's definitely a few honorable mentions. But uh, we might as well get started because this is one hell of a killer list. <laughs> so coming in at number 25, Sam Jackson goes down like a mother. <laughs> I am talking about Deep Blue Sea, Samuel L. Jackson's death scene here. Oh man, I remember seeing this in the movie theater and just being absolutely blown away because you do not expect Samuel L. Jackson to get killed that early in the movie. And it's just, it's so shocking. He's, he's giving this big, big speech about how they're going to survive, all this kind of stuff, and then just, bam, gone. Just like that, and even the, like the people in the movie are in shock, you're in shock in the theater, you're in shock at home when you're watching it. It's just so damn sudden, out of nowhere. It is a just a hell of a piece of shock cinema right there, and it earns a place on our top 25 here at number 25. At number 24, Bob hangs around. <laughs> this is the classic Halloween scene where Michael Myers uh, takes the boyfriend Bob, takes the butcher knife and pin lifts him up and pins him to the door. And then he does the famous head tilt that has been like redone and kind of done. And it's just sort of iconic. This one's full of iconic kills. I think of PJ Souls with the setting up and the, the sheet coming off and do you see anything you like? And Michael Myers has the uh, ghost uh, sheet on him and he's got the beers. But this one, just the idea of that knife going through and in with so much force that he's hanging and he's up off the, the floor and then he kind of just studies it for a minute. Absolutely iconic. Bob hanging around on Halloween comes in at number 24. At number 23, jab, jab, uppercut. <laughs> I am talking about Jason Takes Manhattan and the very famous, like one of the best parts of this movie to me, where the boxer finally has enough and he just says, screw it, I'm going to turn around, I'm tired of running. I'm going to turn around and fight this guy. And he does. And he works him. He works him all the way across the top of that building. And he basically punches himself out. Like, I mean, he's moving Jason back. He's knocking him, knocking him, knocking him. And he's giving him all he's got. But he wears himself out. If he had just a little bit more juice, maybe he could have kept going and knocked Jason off the building. But he's basically out on his feet from exhaustion. And uh, he tells Jason to give him his best shot. Jason grabs him and just uppercut and off with the head. And not just off with the head, but it's from a down angle shooting up on the building. And it rolls downhill and into the garbage can. The lid closes and boom, you have our number 23 video, on our 23 uh, spot on this video. Pretty iconic, and for me, one of the best things about Jason Takes Manhattan is that kill. So jab, jab, uppercut, the boxer's fight, losing his head, comes in at number 23. At number 22, no peeking. 
<laughs> I am talking about the peephole scene, the keyhole scene in Dario Argento's opera. And man, this thing, it's like one of those things that just makes you squeamish. Is anything coming at your eye? And there's been a lot of famous eye kills where things are coming at your eye. Um, but like you're just waiting on it. She keeps peeping through the hole, like looking in there. And on the other side, the guy is showing her the gun. And she's like, no, no, no. Show me your face, not the gun. And he's showing her the gun. And then and he says, OK. And she finally gets in there real close. And you see the gun come up and the bullet, and then it tracks the bullet out of the gun and through the keyhole and then into her eye and out the back of her head. It is absolutely brutal. I'm not even be sure how much I'm going to be able to show of it or a lot of these scenes. We're going we're gonna to see. I'm going to try to show you as much as I can without getting flagged from YouTube. But this one, like it's it's just that whole idea of like, peeping through a hole and somebody getting your eye or things coming at your eye. It just freaks me out. Dario Argento always looking for a new way to kill a woman in his movie. He talks about that, but um, this one definitely iconic and brutal. No peeking. The peephole shot from opera comes in at number 22 on our list. <clears throat> All right. At number 21, on our list is kind of a twofer and it's just going to show you that sleeping bags are dangerous. I am talking about two scenes from Friday the 13th movies. One is from uh, Friday the 13th 2009 where the poor girl is hanging in a sleeping bag zipped up roasting over an open fire. She can't get out. Uh, I think you'd have a hard time having a damn zipper hold me in that situation, but she is tied by her feet to sleeping bags. It is a common theme because if you go way back, there is the famous it, uh, scene in A New Blood where Jason drags the girl out in the sleeping bag. And this is one that had to get cut down to keep this movie from getting an X rating. But he basically does his best interpretation of, you know, Babe Ruth and swings her in the sleeping bag against the tree and kills her with a thud. Now, in the original uncut version, he hits it like he, he just swings like six or seven times, just bludgeoning her against the tree. This is bad enough. There is a thing with sleeping bags and Friday the 13th. These are brutal kills and definitely worthy of a spot on our top 25. Sleeping bags are deadly dangerous, and they come in at number 21 on our list. At number 20 on our list is uh, Dick Gets Axed. <laughs> I am talking about Dick Holleran's death in The Shining. I mean, this this thing this death scene you you know something's coming kubrick i've talked about this movie a lot because kubrick is like a master of putting people in in the middle of the frame like in and showing all this space and making you feel tense because you're seeing all this space and that's not how we normally focus our eyes so you feel all of this space it's kind of like when you're in like a a place that's normally full of people but it's like after hours or something and it's empty and it feels eerie and uncomfortable because you feel all that emptiness in space. Like if you're in a, a school after it, it's closed and empty or a theme park after hours event where it's almost empty or um, a library, a hospital, anything like that where it's normally bustling with people and it's a big open space. But now it it's just you. He shows you that. Uh, Kubrick shows you that and makes you feel that while watching the movie. So when Dick comes in, he's trying to come to save the day and help them get out of there. And he's walking through this space and he's slow walking room to room. And then there comes Jack just out with the ax swinging for all he's worth. Like again, like a baseball, just swinging that ax like a baseball bat. And it just comes out of nowhere 
in that space, all that tension build up and Dick takes the ax in the chest and then Jack goes after him again and kills him. It is a brutal, sudden death, absolutely iconic. And the look on Jack's face when he raises up is just as iconic, that wild eyed and crazy Dick hollering gets axed. And uh, that comes in at number 20 on our list. At number 19 on our list, just remember, yoga is good for you. (laughs) I am talking about the yoga kill scene in, in a violent nature. Now, I have a lot of mixed feelings. I just did a review on this movie. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this movie and this kill scene. But it is absolutely brutal. It's shocking because the way it just keeps going and going and going. And the minute you think it's done, it's not. And it just keeps going and going and going. And it is an absolutely brutal kill. It has got to be the newest film on this list with a kill. But I think it's one that when people see the movie, it's one that sticks out to them. So... The yoga kill from In a Violent Nature comes in on our list at number 19. Coming in at number 18 is one that is a little bit more retro and is from one of our favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I call it I Want My Fred TV. And uh, this is from Dream Warriors. And this is the classic scene where the where Freddy comes out and he's basically his body is the TV and he's got the arms and his head is on top of the TV and he kills the girl by smashing her head into the TV. And, you know, bitch, like it, it, it's just classic Freddy. There are some good kills in this movie um, and in Nightmare on Elm Street overall. But like that one to me was so 80s with the TV I want my MTV. I want my Fred TV smashing her face into into it. Absolutely crazy. And uh, it comes in here at number 18 on our list. At number 17 on our list proves that it's not just the people in a movie that can be victims of a brutal kill. It can be the head bad guy itself because in this one, Jason goes down and I am talking about um, the final chapter uh, Friday the 13th when Jason and he know what I'm talking about. You have Corey Feldman comes down the stairs. He's got the shaved head. It throws Jason off. Corey Feldman has the machete. They kill Jason. They're hitting him with the machete. They stop him. But just when you think it's over and and they've beaten him and they're okay, they were planning for this to be the last one initially because you see Jason go down and slide his face down that machete and it basically cuts his head in half, like it just sticks through his eye and saws through his head. And it does it painfully, painfully slow. And it just keeps cutting back to it, showing it. It is an absolutely brutal kill. A turnabout is fair play where one of our big bads gets it in the end. And in this one, it is Jason. Jason goes down, comes in at number 17 on our list. At number 16 on our list, hey, let's just hang around. (laughs) I am talking about the iconic opening scene in Suspiria. Well, the opening death scene in Suspiria where the woman gets hung. Now it's not enough. I'm not talking, I'm not even talking about the stabbing, the repeated stabbing again and again until the, it shows the open heart and she's getting stabbed again and again and again. And then the open heart is beating and gets stabbed. That's not enough. You see the hand come in, reach for the, the rope, And next thing you know, it is just this fast fall and sudden drop and stop. And that image of her hanging there in all like the Technicolor red, thick blood everywhere. 
It's the color of the um, Synapse, or the cover of the Synapse release right there because it's iconic, that hanging there. And it is, that whole death scene is brutal, but for some reason, more than the knife stabs to me, it's just that violent nature of the drop and the whoosh, of the of the rope uh, with the neck breaking. So to me, it's an iconic kill, one that has to be on this list. If it can make the cover of a 4K release, you know it's iconic. So Argento, killing women again and uh, hanging around to do it, comes in at number 16. At number 15, here's a little tip to just remember, and that is tent sex is dangerous. <laughs> I am talking about Friday the 13th, Jason goes to hell, and this is that scene that really to see it all, you have to see the unrated, uncut version, but it's absolutely brutal. Jason cuts through the back of the um, tent while the two, uh, the girl and the guy are having sex and she's on top of him. And the next thing you know, it comes through her, like he stabs her through the back, comes out the front, the blood hits the guy and it is absolutely brutal and iconic to me. So iconic, in fact, I did a little homage to this kill in my movie, Bring Me a Dream. Very, very similar to how this goes down and absolutely brutal. You got to see the uncut version to get it all. Who knows how much of it I can even show you here. I'll try to show you a little bit, but uh, it definitely, definitely has to have a place on our list and it comes in at number 15. At number 14 on our list, Georgie lends a hand. I am talking about the iconic opening scene in It. Now, it doesn't matter which version of It that you watch, whether it's the original in 1990 or It Chapter 1, the remake from 2017, I think it is. They are both brutal. Now, the remake kicks it up a notch because they could show more um, than you could for, on a made-for-TV movie in 1990 where they were probably filming it in 89. Um, so you could show a lot more. You could do a lot more. Both are brutal. They both get the point across to just that of him. You know it, the tension building, you know it the whole time, you know, it's coming and you just, the way he reaches in and it's just, it's absolutely, it's like one of those things where the tension is unbearable. You know, something's going to happen. If you haven't seen it, you just don't know what. If you have seen it, the tension of waiting for it to happen again uh, is so absolutely brutal. It is an iconic death scene, an iconic kill, and it, with Georgie lending a hand, has to be on our list. It comes in at number 14. At number 13, Frank rips one. <laughs> I am talking about Frank's second death in Hellraiser. This guy is sick. He gets off on pain. He's, you know, a sadist, a sadomasochist. He, he gets off on pain. He thrives on pain. But the second death where all of the chains come in and just rip his skin off and it's got his face pulled apart and all of that. And even in that moment, he still like makes a quip like, he's almost getting off on it. I mean, it's so messed up. You know, he 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 takes a shot. He says, and G Jesus wept. In other words, like, he's talking about Jesus wept on the cross, and here he is having, you know, being flayed in all of these hooks, pulling him apart and ripping him apart, and he is basically enjoying it, which is just messed up. But it is absolutely iconic and just absolutely disturbing. So it has to be on our list. It comes in here at number 13. At number 12 on our list, I need to ask you a question. Do you want to play a game? No, I'm not talking about Saul. You're not going to find a lot of torture porn type stuff. Those kills, I'm not into that. I don't think they're iconic. I think it's the whole point is just to be gross. I am talking about the 
classic opening scene with Drew Barrymore in Scream. This, when this came out, I drove me and my buddies, um, or my best friend and uh, I drove, I drove him, uh, Lee. Uh, we went to see at the old Snellville Cinema 5 here in Snellville, Georgia, up on the hill, 1996. I drove my little 1980 Mazda RX-7, my first car, and I drove us over there to see it. And you see Drew Barrymore at the start of the movie, and you're like, oh man, here's our hero, right? She's going to be in this movie. She's our hero. And then the way that whole scene builds and builds and then she gets killed. And it's not enough that she gets killed. Her boyfriend is gutted. She gets killed. And then the lasting shot, like all basically before the opening credits, is her hanging from a tree with her gut spilled out. And it's like, well, there goes Drew Barrymore. It is an absolutely iconic scene, an iconic kill, and one that like I will remember forever. And uh, it has to be on our list. Uh, Drew Barrymore's death in Scream comes in at number 12. At number 11 on our list is a little Captain's Feast. And I am talking about watching the captain get eaten and yell and cuss and basically say, choke on my entrails in Day of the Dead. I mean, you can argue that the captain is a bad is a bad guy. So you're kind of seeing him, you know, get his comeuppance in a way. But like he's so defiant all the way to the end and the way like it just keeps going and these zombies are eating him and pulling apart. And like, you know, you hear all these sounds and he's still till his last breath. He's like defiant and. And literally telling him that he hopes they choke on his entrails. Uh, it is an iconic death scene. I mean, I would love to see Day of the Dead get a 4K. I haven't seen it in a while. But that scene still sticks out in my mind. A Captain's Feast. <laughs> that is a horrible <laughs> nickname for it, but it's so fitting. And uh, the death, the Captain's death in Day of the Dead comes in at number 11. We have now made it to our top 10, and I'm sure there's some of you guys out there, you're waiting on one or the other, or whatever. I'm probably disappoint some of you. I make others of you happy. But coming in at 10 is an absolute iconic death scene, and uh, it's the dangers of skinny dipping. I am talking about the opening scene in Jaws, the, the scene that before the movie even gets rolling scared a lot of people out of the ocean where they're, you know, they're going skinny dipping, they're pulling their clothes off. The luckiest thing that ever happened to the guy that, um, is it Chrissy? Um, that uh, he is with, uh, the, that she is with, is that he was too drunk to do anything and he passed out on the beach because she goes in the water and the way that scene is acted and the, the pulling under the water. It's she's almost like a bobber on a fishing line being pulled under and back up and pulled under and back up and then moving. It is absolutely brutal. That is a master class of scaring the ever loving hell out of people without showing anything. You let people's imagination fill in everything. Jaws is a classic. The opening death is absolutely iconic it is also another cover death where you see Jaws coming up uh, and she's on top of the water there. Absolutely iconic. A little skinny dip and never hurt unless you're in Jaws and then it's a killer. And it comes in at number 10 on our list. At number 9, we are going elbows deep. I am talking about the defibrillate, defibrillator scene in The Thing. Oh man. This is practical effects and just set up uh, at its finest right here. Uh, now, I, I don't think I can show you all this because it gets pretty gruesome. But when they are trying to revive the guy and they use the defibrillator and the arms go all the way in 
and the thing has assimilated the guy and the, the teeth come out and bite off the arms and he pulls back and his arms are off. And, oh man, not only is it a masterclass in, in filming and cutting and practical effects, so they went and got a double amputee to play this part right here to, for part of this scene to help sell it. You completely sell it completely sells it. All hell breaks loose at that point. The thing is out. You see him. It is absolutely messed up. And that scene launches it all. And before if you've never seen the movie, like there's no way you see that coming. Like you could maybe think something's about to happen, but not that. And then once you've seen it a hundred times, you're just waiting on it because you just know it. So it the it never loses the anticipation. You know it. You're waiting for to see it, and it's uh, it's just like when you know somebody's around the corner about to jump out at you, and it still gets you anyway. And uh, that scene is absolutely iconic. Hell of a hell of a hell of a scene. The way it was shot, the effects, everything else, it holds up today. It comes in at number nine on our list. At number eight on our list is uh, Tracking My Sister. I am talking about Little Michael Myers' first ever kill, the long steady cam one shot where it follows Little Michael Myers and you see through his eyes in the door and through the house and up to his sister's room uh, where she is sitting at her little vanity and getting ready or undressed and you see the knife framing now, I'm not sure why, I mean, honestly, why would Michael be looking at the knife uh, in, the, in the scene? But it is pretty disturbing. He comes in and kills his sister. And uh, it is kind of set the precedent for how they would shoot a lot of different things with like one shot or steady cam tracking shots um, in the Halloween franchise. And it's often been, uh, you know, replicated in horror films since then absolutely iconic he comes out at the end and he's like a, a zombie almost and they pull his mask off and the kid's just standing there with the knife in his hand uh absolutely iconic kill iconic to the franchise it comes in at number eight at number seven farewell and adieu you dear spanish ladies farewell and adieu you ladies of spain I am talking about Captain Quint's death in Jaws. Holy moly. Yes, the opening scene is is terrifying, but there is something about this scene. Like, it, you know, talking about somebody getting eaten by a shark or getting bit by a shark is one thing. But the way Quint just slowly slides down the sinking boat and you see Jaws chompers, his teeth just biting, waiting. And it's it's like this just slow motion death. Like it's just coming, coming, coming. And it's like, oh my God, every time I watch it, I'm like, grab something else, do something, do something. And he just, he can't. And it's just sliding down, down, down. And, and I mean, imagine looking down at a pit and you're sliding down and there's nothing you can do to stop yourself. And you see those teeth just biting 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 waiting on you to get there absolutely brutal absolutely terrifying horrible way to go iconic the high pitched scream when the final bite happens absolutely brutal iconic kill a horrible horrible way to die and uh it comes in here on our list at number seven after that, though, at number six, I feel like I got a uh, <clears throat> bad case of heartburn. I am talking about the chest burster scene in Alien. Holy crap. We had never seen anything like that happen. And that being done practically and the buildup of that, um, man, holy shit. That's where people say Alien is a horror movie. I still say Alien is a sci-fi horror. It's listed as a sci-fi first. It is a science fiction movie with horror elements. This death is damn sure a horror element, the way it's built up. They don't know what's going on. 
We don't know what's going on as an audience, particularly if it's the first time you've seen it. It is absolutely brutal. The thought of some foreign like being just bursting through your chest and your rib cage, and we see the little baby alien for the first time. Absolutely brutal. Didn't know what the hell was going on. It and the sound effects in it just make it so rough. But uh, it is absolutely iconic. It has to come in here on our list. And it comes in at number six. Now we're going to lighten things up at number five uh, and get a little romantic with a uh, wet dream. <laughs> I am talking about Depp spewing the Johnny Depp's death scene in Nightmare on Elm Street. Holy shit, is this iconic. Like, now we look back and Johnny Depp is so famous, but like this is where he started. So, you you know, people weren't saying, oh my God, Johnny Depp. Did you see the way Johnny Depp got killed in that movie? So that didn't have anything to do with it. What was so big time brutal on this is just the buckets and gallons of blood spewing everywhere. And something too about, I watch it and I had that exact same TV that Johnny Depp has got on his lap. Mine was black and white, just like that. It was white, like the TV picture was black and white. It was white plastic with the handle, the antenna. And there's just something about taking that safe space, your bed, like the place where you're supposed to be the most safe in the world. He's got his mom just told him good night. He's in there all comfortable. He's on his bed in his bedroom. He's got his TV. Everything is right with the world. And then he falls asleep and up comes Freddy to pull him down. We don't see what happens to him, but it's almost like he's put through a damn juicer in the middle of that bed and just buckets and buckets of blood fly up. No way you got that much blood in your body, but hey, it's a nightmare. And it is one that is absolutely iconic. So Depp's Wet Dream comes in at number five here on our list. At number four on our list is a little parting shot. And I am talking about the Night of the Living Dead, the final, like the end of that movie. This isn't a monster doing killing. It isn't like some big action sequence. There's nobody really to blame. This scene is just absolutely horrific, realistic, and just heartbreaking. Uh, the lone survivor comes out. The guy comes out of the basement and he looks out and there's salvation, right? There's everybody. Here comes the posse, the militia, the people. You've survived the night of the living dead and they're wiping out what's left of these zombies. You are safe. They're shooting the zombies uh, and rounding them up and burning the bodies because... It is, you know, it's all over with. You're safe. You survived. And then he looks out the window and bam, he gets shot by one of the guys in the head. Just like that. No fanfare, no music. They think he's another zombie. Why wouldn't they think he's a zombie? He, you know, he's just, he's looking out the window. They're shooting zombies. They don't expect, he doesn't say anything. And they never know any difference. And it's like all this stuff he did to survive the night. And just like that, it's gone. And it's just like a cold ending. And it sticks out in my mind. It's so powerful. Uh, and just a lasting of like, oh, what the hell? Like, it is It is so brutal uh, and so real. And it just, it just like stops the movie at the end and that's it and it is a lasting impression here for me so that little parting shot in uh night of the living dead comes in at number four on our list at number three in our on our list is uh you know what are friends and flowers for i am talking about the horrifically heartbreaking scene in the original Frankenstein. It starts off so warm. Frankenstein himself, he doesn't know anything. And he meets the little girl and they're sharing the fly. She's sharing flowers with him. And he's so happy. 
Uh, he's like a big dumb dog, basically. He doesn't know anything, you know, at all. This is just making him happy, and they're throwing the flowers into the water, and he's clapping, and the girl's smiling, and they're so happy, and it's this beautiful scene. And Because he's not evil, he just doesn't know anything. So he runs out of flowers, and he does, it makes him sad. He doesn't like how he makes him feel. And to him, there's no difference between throwing the flower in the water and the little girl in the water. There's no difference. It's all just, it, this is fun. Let's throw everything in the water. He doesn't know any difference. And that's what makes it more horrible. Uh, and he just picks the girl up and throws her in the water. And she can't swim. And she can't get back up. And then he realizes something bad has happened. And he's like pawing at the water. He has no idea what to do because he doesn't know anything. He's a big baby. Like he has no idea what he's doing. He's a big baby with unlimited strength and destructive potential. And um, it's just absolutely sad, horrible, iconic and like the the realization like that something bad has happened and he freaks out and and runs away when he can't save her and uh it's just one of those things it's an iconic moment in cinema and absolutely heartbreaking at the same time the death of the little girl in frankenstein comes in at number 3 on our list <clears throat> at number 2 on our list is a serious roll in the hay and I am talking about Tina's death in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Holy shit. The whole ceiling, like, talk about never seeing anything like that before. Um, some of you, like, I'm an 80s kid, so maybe some of you wouldn't have this this high on your list. For me, it set the tone for everything Nightmare on Elm Street is. It set the tone for different kills. Like, just seeing her roll up on the bed, get attacked, roll up the wall onto the ceiling and just keep getting slashed, slashed. And this is after he has scared her in her nightmare where she's outside in an alleyway and his arms go really long. And then he's sitting there counting his fingers and chopping them off with, with his gloves. And now you see there's no funny, there's no jokes, there's no quips, there's no Freddy-isms. This is just an absolutely bloody, brutal kill. And then her poor boyfriend is sitting there. Imagine watching that. And you have no idea what's happening or how to stop it. I mean, just the overwhelming gruesomeness of that. It is an absolutely iconic kill. It has to be on my list. It has to be on anyone's list. It set the tone for Nightmare on Elm Street and what Freddy could do. And it was absolutely terrifying and groundbreaking at the same time when it happened. So Tina's death in Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, comes in at number two on our list. A serious damn roll in the hay. And that brings us to number one on my list. And man, I thought about this a lot and uh, it, you know, I, I started to sweat thinking about like what is number one on this list what is what is important to cinema what is iconic what do I like all of these kind of things I started to sweat so much I said you know what let's take a shower it's got to be Janet Lee and Psycho I mean come on that has got to be the most famous kill ever in horror films. Like, it, it has to be. Like, maybe there's something else you can throw at me that is more famous than that. It's hard to beat that. And Hitchcock going for it to the point of knowing that it's going to be shot in black and white, and I'm sure you know the story, in order to make the blood stand out more, they use chocolate syrup instead of, uh, like, red blood so that it would really be dark uh, in there. And just the idea, again, you're safe as you can be in the shower, in your home and then you get killed and you're just slashed again and again and again and again with the knife and talk about setting up for every slasher after that how many friday the 13th movies how many 
uh, Freddy movies, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, how many slasher movies, it became a horror trope, girl in the shower gets killed. I mean, like the things that you don't do, you don't have sex in the movie, you don't shirk your responsibilities, you don't drink, you don't do drugs, and you don't, you don't get naked and get in the shower or get in the water. Like, we have Psycho to thank for a lot of that. And this scene with Janet Lee, absolutely iconic. I feel like it'd be hard to argue against that being number one on the list as far as the impact that it's had, the 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 public consciousness. Like, if you don't know horror movies, you know that. And that sound, the, you know it. Um, people know that scene. It's like in the collective zeitgeist. Uh, Psycho, Janet Lee in the shower, Alfred Hitchcock, it's number one on my list. And there you go. That is my top 25 best horror kills of all time. And I purposely left out things. Like I said, nothing in Saw, like the, nothing that was designed just to try to be gross out. No. Uh, it has to be in the, more in the context of the story. Uh, it has to be shocking. If you're going in to see Saw movie or Hostel, you know what you're going for. I'm not into that. Um, and then I took out things where it was a bunch of people being killed. One of the most iconic death scenes, I think, of all time is the opening of Ghost Ship. Absolutely brutal. That's going to be found in another list that I do soon, but it's nothing with a bunch of people. Same thing on the burning uh, at the end with the raft and all those kills, but that's a bunch of people. It's iconic. It's going to come in on another list. Um, so this is more like one person being killed and just, just shocking an audience and standing the test of time. And uh, I think that I've done that with the 25 here. Now, there's some that I had to leave off. The Burning Man. Um, holy shit. Or, excuse me, The Wicker Man. Uh, where he's burned inside the big wicker man and they're burning the man to death. That is brutal. The wicker man death is brutal. There is no question. Iconic to uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre where he gets clubbed and they drag him in and his legs shaking. Absolutely iconic. I could see an argument made for that. There were some others. I wrote down a couple of others. Um, but really like you're, it's just semantics. Like the, 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 the list could go on. Those deserve to be mentioned. There are others that deserve to be mentioned. Uh, even in like um, uh, Jason X, like where he sticks her face in the nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, that is absolutely brutal. There are a lot of great and inventive, inventive deaths in uh, horror films, and uh, that's what part of what we're always looking for, to get that uh, catharsis of, of seeing that stuff, but then being safe at the same time. And, uh, I think these are absolutely iconic, uh, kills. Uh, let me know what you think. Which ones, uh, do you agree with my list? Would you take some off? Would you put something else on? Uh, be nice. Remember, this is, uh, just my list. This is what I think. Uh, everybody's going to have different opinions, but, uh, let's talk about it. That's what makes it fun. And, uh, we have a lot of spooky season focused content between now and the end of October to come, but we do all kinds of things here. 4K reviews, physical media news, lists, rankings, physical media talk from a filmmaker and fans perspective, all that stuff. You guys know it. If that's the kind of stuff you enjoy, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, help get me out of my physical media buying freeze, you can join down below at my Patreon link or right here on YouTube. You get all kinds of uh, special uh, perks and privileges, behind the scenes look at my filmmaking. Uh, I've got some short horror films on there that I've done for film competitions, things like that. All kinds of stuff being added all the time, on-set photos, all kinds of things, members-only videos, get your name in lights here. But as I always say, you don't have to do any of that to help me out. Just like, subscribe, ring that bell, and spread the pop culture word. We're having a lot of fun here, and there is a whole lot more spooky season content to come. But until next time, be kind, rewind like always. This is Chase with AV Pop Culture, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. I know.